Hey guys, the reason why I titled this message the way that I titled it, Why a Stage? Because God's cleaning house. Okay, I'm going to start with a couple scriptures. Yeah, Old Testament, I get it. But I'm going to bring them into the New Testament too for many of you that want to get on that soapbox. Sorry. I want to get on that soapbox. Ooh, all, all that stuff. Second Chronicles 29, 1 Corinthians 15, 42 through 49. Second Chronicles. I don't have to read the whole chapter, but it wouldn't hurt to, to do it. But the Lord spoke to Hezekiah, told him that the, that the house of God was polluted. clean house. Had to get the priests and purge it. It was first natural, then spiritual. They got out all the trash and debris. <clears throat> That's that's us today, guys. There's so many people that claim to be even the church, and they're not. I'm sorry. This isn't going to be the greatest message for people. And some people are going to even get mad. That's not my intention and point. It's to be about my father's business. He's telling me to get rid of the stages in the church because it's not the Super Bowl. Look around, guys. I'm, look around at the stages that people put up. They want to have the million man church, bunches of people. They want to have a bigger microphone. They want to be up six flights of steps or whatever, or even one flight of steps. Guys, I'm not a conspiracy theory or anything, but it's almost subliminal, honestly. I'm just be brutally honest with you. Oh, how is that? Well, because they think they're better than. True. Most people are barking nowadays from the church side. I'm, I'm connotating this toward the church side because God wants the house to clean up first, his people. The world isn't going to clean up. <laughs> they're just not listening. Many of you all weren't. But he's after his church, his true bride. He wants him to get him to listen. Clean up time, guys. Clean up on aisle 13. Clean up the church. It's a platform. We don't need a platform. Oh, and I'm not saying don't gather together. I'm not saying that. Don't get on that bandwagon either. All that, oh, you're anti-church, you're anti-this, you're anti-that. No, I'm anti Things that aren't of God. Nothing to do with them. It's all about the man with the mic standing up on top of everybody, above everybody. And like I said, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, guys. I'm not making this up just for the sensationalism of it, coming against, against it, against something. Like the world is right now, and the church and everybody else is, you know, the more you're against it, the more newsworthy it is. The conspiracy theorists, that's why I said I'm not a part of it, we're still trying to figure out who shot JFK and whether we landed on the moon or not because a flag blown in the wind. I'll get plenty of them. That dog won't hunt. I'm not buying them all. What I'm going to do is pray. That's why I put out that message, 5 a.m., time to pray and weep between the porch and the altar. So the Lord told me to t tell this nation, everybody I can, it's time, guys. We weep and pray. Really get it from our source. <laughs> Instead of all this hokey-pokey sensationalism, house cleaning, purge the house of God. Let's bring it into the New Testament.
because this is Old Testament. I get it. But it's a type and shadow. You still have to follow it and purge the house. But in the New Testament, that house or the temple, you and me. So what do you got that you built as an altar? That's not from God. Is it your job, your wife, your car, your money, your status, your power? <laughs> the end of this, that's why I put this on the end of the title. If I be lifted up, I'll draw them in. We want to be the light. But we want to be the light how we think we should be the light now, how God thinks we should be the light now. When he, nothing to do with him, most of it. Waving a, your cape or whatever and showing how many people you can heal. Having a whole field full of people and saying how great, what a mighty move of God that is. Maybe, maybe not. Where'd you get it from, guys? Was it birth in prayer? Or was it just because everybody else is doing it? You want the sensationalism? You, man, think about it, guys. The reason why I'm picking on the stage is because it's all focused on that. And the bigger band. Some of them have gotten to the stages of where it's, you might as well be a rock concert. Been to plenty of them. Lights, camera, action. There's nothing. It, some dude on a guitar for an hour and a half, and that's supposed to be a prayer worship time. Cut the baloney at best. Get over yourselves. Get on your knees and pray and ask God, is that really, you know, don't even have to listen to me. I'm not trying to irritate you. I'm telling you it's time to get right with God. All of us. Me included, okay? I'm recently doing, been doing, you know, I did, about two years ago, the Lord told me to do something. It wasn't even what I wanted to do, honestly. It wasn't even on my mind, my radar. Something I did years ago, but I didn't do it correctly and rightfully in, res in the sight of God. But still, what He wanted me to do, I just didn't do it the way He wanted it. And He told me, and I heard most of it, but I still had a little bit of that in there. And I didn't realize it. Now I do. So I've had to change course a little bit. Yes, I did what he told me to do, 90%. 10%, the little leaven leaveth the whole lumps. You know, the, I didn't realize some of it was sin, honestly. It wasn't like intentional sin, but it became something it was never intended to be. <clears throat> so I'm regrouping, re-bringing it to the Lord in prayer. Lord, what do I do to change my ways in this? <clears throat> House cleaning, guys. And he wants you to do a thorough job of it, not just, you know, superficial. <clears throat> Time to clean the house of God, guys. <clears throat> Get rid of the Shazam sensationalism that we become and claim it to be church. There's going to be no more hiding behind the gospel. Because it's just a sham. It's going to go out like it is, guys. I didn't want the job. Don't go out that. Pick somebody else. I argued with them over it for almost for years. Told my wife finally, I was like, man, I have not won one argument yet with God. Lost everyone. He wins the battles. But Stevie. Lost all these. <clears throat> so now it's like, okay, God. Don't know how. Sometimes don't even know why. <clears throat> but okay, God. Be obedient. Pray about it. Learn about it. Seek Him about it. Get direction from Him about it. It's gonna be birthed in prayer, guys. <clears throat> you want to think, you know, the tools that you're gonna need. You're gonna need prayer. It's like you need a broom to sweep. The house clean. You're gonna need to listen. So you have to have that mind of Christ, not your mind. You have to have a pure and clean heart and want to do what he's telling you. Not just, okay, that sounds good, God of God, run off, take off. <clears throat> So 
so many of us, you know, we think we just, a lot of it's around the music too right now, guys, honestly. It's got so twisted up. Might as well be the, like I said, the Super Bowl entertainment for the week. So crazy, and unrealistic, and, and, and ungodly. Why? Because it's demonic, honestly, a lot of it. You just get all worked up. I'm not knocking it. I've got some really good songs in my heart. The Lord carried me through with one of them. There's some major battles I was in. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. A big one for me, guys. I'm not saying, you know, just I'm older. Okay, of course. But music's a little differently. Of course. I get all that, of course. I'm not knocking it. I'm saying that the world has twisted it up and the church has took off with it. Why? Because they can gain power, money, status, bigger stage. So you look up to them. Think about it, guys. Most of Sundays, and a lot of people don't, you know, there's some churches that are real adamant about Saturday being the Sabbath, and, and okay. But most of them, it's all about the stage and the one-hour show, two-hour show. Some of them, maybe three, most of them 45 minutes, a lot of them. They want people in and out, and it's all the digital garbage. <clears throat> and most of the barking about the politics is because people don't want to get cut off of the 501C because there's, because of the really big churches, it's millions of dollars because it's not just the millions of dollars, it's, they don't have to pay in taxes, it's the people that won't give because they don't have a tax receipt for it, write off for it. The big, the big guys with a lot of money. Just get serious here, guys. It's not about the blood of the Lamb. It's not about the Holy Ghost. It's not about God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. It's about you and your show. Time to clean house, guys. I did. I got off track here a little bit. I didn't bring it back into the New Testament. Oh, yeah, I kind of did. But yeah, Old Testament, I get it. There's a guy. I, my, my backyard, not full of bulls and goats and not waiting to slaughter them and spread their blood all over my house and all over the land. <laughs> that changed with Jesus, God's plan. It's his blood that was shed for us, his sacrifice. You gotta be covered under the blood of the lamb. You gotta be connected to the vine. And the only way you're gonna get it, <clears throat> start with prayer, listen, with a pure and clean heart and obey and do what he tells you to do. There's no more of this gamesmanship and all this other, some of the people are pretty smart and they could probably run a very successful business. Well, just do that and give your portion to God instead of trying to claim to be a pastor. You know, so many people are claim to be prophets and this and that. And if, if you read, the, if you really read the Bible, you don't even want the job. Guys, it's all about, really is. I've got some close friends and it's like, man, now suddenly there's, you know, it's like, man, it gets twisted up real quick into you and not him. And we all can get there, guys. Put the shoe on the other foot. If any one of us all of a sudden became famous or something or a book or something, you know, that's why most of us, don't, because God wants us to enter in. It's going to deviate us from his plan in our lives if we got plenty of money to do everything. Or plenty of stuff, or plenty of importance, or, you know, a bunch of people listening to us sitting on the edge of their seat, listening to every word we say. Where are you the rest of the week? past the Sunday service or the Sunday night, the showmanship. Where are you when you're at the retail store and somebody really needs prayer? Where are you when the guy's standing in the corner or gal homeless and you just drive by? Where are you? I'm gonna end with this, guys, okay? Three years. 
ministering at a pretty big homeless shelter in Dallas. Didn't ask for anything. One of the messages one time was I told the guys, I said, guys, I'm not here for the money. I said, if I call for an offering, I get two bucks and some pocket lint. They all laughed. I was there to preach the gospel, set them free, to get them Bibles, to teach them the goodness of Christ, the blood of the Lamb, the truth. Three years. One of those three years is maybe the second, maybe the third year. Oh, actually, we were there four years, I think. Um, <clears throat> pulled up is January or December 22nd. And nobody had called me from there. So to say, hey, the church service got canceled. I pulled in, not a real big park, not a big place, but not a super big, man, it was full. There's 300 people in there, all wearing Jesus shirts, all had stockings with candy canes hanging out, all kinds of gifts and stuff, things for the homeless. <laughs> Next week, none of them weeks before none of them nobody showed up well, where are you guys the rest of the year the rest of the time where are you this is not a one hour three hour serve God church service relationship with him that's what I'm trying to tell you none of us this is not a finger pointing guys I gotta do the same thing I don't get a free pass been saved for 40 years, I still don't get a free pass. It had nothing to do with it. It was just a timing thing. And when he saved me, that's how long it took me to get here. 1980. Still, we're all caught up in the I have Facebook as a platform, YouTube as a platform, this is a platform, that is a platform, digital is a platform, everybody's, you know, blah, 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 blah. Clean house. Purge. It's become unholy, unclean, unattainable. Even all this mess of this last disease is that hit. And there's more to come. Most of the church, instead of listening, they ducked and hide head and they kept trying to come back the same. They didn't repent. They didn't turn from their wicked ways. Pray for these leaders because they're under immense spiritual attack. But some of them aren't going to change. You can't change that. But the ones that are, you can. Pray for them. Keep them lifted up in your prayers. But if they don't change, then leave. Why well, said this message is not going to go good with everybody? Because you could be, you know, one pastor said it, he said the banana that leaves the stalk gets peeled first, or something to that effect. So yeah, you know, there is strength in numbers. There is strength in true relationship with him, with others. There is the accountability issue. There's all of those above things. But there's a responsibility in all of us. Whether you're a layman or the pastor or senior pastor. We're trying to make it about you. The reason why I can say that is because that's the I'm not that's where he's got me at, guys. Those are the messages he gives me a lot of mark to the to the leadership and just cry bull when I see bull. I'm very sorry to be the bad guy in this. I'm not trying to be, but it's time to purge. Like his up. He wants us white as snow. He wants us covered in the blood of the lamb. He wants his people clean, holy, and acceptable and pure, unadulterated, unaffected by the world. Unaffected by the gas price that is going to hit 10 bucks a gallon easily. The route we're going, I said that six, eight months ago. So what, you know? Uh, everybody wants the newest, latest, greatest prophecy. Somebody just barking up a storm about something that they God told them. You better pray about it. I'm not perfect, but I pray about things that God tells me. Sometimes they don't come out for years. Are you sure, God? I bounce it off them because some aren't what people want to hear. The reason why people don't want to hear the truth 
is because it's not that they don't want to hear the truth. It's that they don't want to hear that they're where they're heading to because of sin in their lives. And what's going to happen? That's why people are so fearful about dying because they know they don't have Christ. We got to get them to that, to the cross, not to the stage, not to these phony altars, not to this man-made stuff. And it is man-made, guys. It's man-made so they can have a bigger building, a better car, a nicer jet, whatever. Name it. Pick it. Nice house. Why do you need a $10 million compound from people, from people that have given you money to spread the gospel? Don't. You get by with a $200,000 house. $100,000 house. With a roof over your head. And be thankful for that. Come on, guys. This is a warning message to the, to the leaderships. Knock it off. God's saying, stop. Get rid of the stage. Get rid of the pollution that's in your house. Because it leads. It, it ushers in. It lets demonic... Horses come in because you open the door very wide. And they don't just, they don't even have to ask anymore. They just walk in. This is political, sort of, yes. That's what this country's doing now. Man, we just, and a lot of people, my dad included, fought against in Korea. Been, you know, messy war, so was Vietnam, all of them. But he, you know, was trying to stand up against the tyranny and the, socialism and all that other garbage now we just kind of open the door and say because of the money but i mean guys are we gonna but are we gonna let that influence us it shouldn't we should influence them not them influence us But we can't because it'll expose our pollution so to hide behind it and act like we're this big powerhouse pretty weak and lame and kind of even spineless almost sorry oh yeah everybody's got a t-shirt everybody's got a saying everybody's got a bumper sticker everybody's got a flag they stand behind everybody's got Microphone, they stand behind and they blast, proclaim, yell at you. Man, what are you really doing with what God's given you? Love you guys, um, but it's house cleaning. And it starts here. So guess what? It starts with me on this one. This message is not just... For everybody, this message is for me, too, just as much. I got a house to clean, too. My own house that God dwells in. Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. So get a grip, guys. Get over yourselves, guys. Humble yourselves, guys. That's why it says that if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways. They don't want to hear the land. You got to do that stuff first. You can't go, go around it. You can't have some music club that this is the this is the new way to get into god i said I, i've watched plenty of some of them i don't even watch them anymore but you pick pick through the you know fast forward it hour and a half of just some dude on a guitar or a keyboard oh what a mighty move of god <laughs> man sad really 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 sad Your source is not God. Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Word. And you're going to get a birth in prayer and listening to God and a pure heart. The listening part is really listening, not just what you want to hear. Not just somebody that agrees with you. Look at, not necessarily just divorce people, but argument. People have arguments, whether it's in court or not. You know, there's generally two sides, but, you know, 
they, they want to go to find some the lawyers, of course, they'll do it because there's a lot of money in it for some of them. But they're just trying to find something to listen to them, to agree with them. I'm not trying to get anybody to agree with me. I'm getting trying to get you closer to God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. You can get it on your own. That's my message. But because the church is so polluted, we can't see through the pollution. The river's dirty, guys. It's not a river of God. It's a, it's a filthy river running through there. A pollution, sin, everything goes. Inclusion, whatever. <laughs> Politics, just downright stupidity. Common sense goes out the window. You got the answer. The roadmap called the Bible. It's your knees to get hold of God. Weep and cry between the porch and the altar. Let him know. Guys, your heart. Man, guys. We got to get rid of this pollution. If we're going to want the world to see us as the light. I don't see any different. Why, why would you want to come to church? Most of them. I know that's not popular. Ah, I get it. Do I look like I'm running for president? No. Stupid phone. Another interruption from the world. An amber alert. The weather alert. <laughs> Another distraction. That's a whole other message, guys. But that's what the world is doing. It's blasting and bleeping and paging and blowing us up with this technology. More pollution. We can't see because of the pollution, guys, in the church. And if you're in the church, you can't see because of the pollutedness of the stage and the altar. And the success is based upon numbers. How much money you're bringing in. How big your building is. How many people you saved and set free how big your, your your audience is and the stages are a magnet and they draw everybody and who are they looking at? Certainly not Jesus, certainly not God, certainly not the Holy Ghost, certainly not his word. They're looking at some dude or, or woman in a pulpit. That could be a whole other message and argument for some of y'all. Fine, have at it. <clears throat> you better get your focus on him and his plan. God's plan was Jesus. No more pollution. Don't even call your house itself a house of God with all this pollution, because it's not the house of God. It's just another <clears throat> polluted, surreal. You know, I'll end with this, okay? <clears throat> the prophet business. <clears throat> Me and David Koresh called himself a prophet. Look what kind of mess he was involved in. He was a pedophile and a, just a man. He just didn't care. People died and plenty of them did. And for what? What kind of prophet was he? He wasn't. He was a liar and a thief. And people lost their lives over it. Granted, not a lot. 168 or how many ever plus all the, you know, all the stuff that it took, you know, from the FBI and all the resources and everything. Man, it was a mess. Get off of the stage, guys, and into the real world. And set the captives free. Love you guys. Miss you. Um, love you. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon.